So a couple of months ago, we were in Las Vegas at the NAB convention, and we came across the Teradex stand, and there was a couple of products that we were very impressed with. We've now got them in, and what we'd like to do is give you a quick run through of them, give you a little bit of explanation about the different uh, products they've got in their family, how you should be using them, which applications they're for, and I'm going to give you a quick, simple setup of how to get them up and running so you can maximize them to, for your production. So, a couple of decisions you've got to make when you're buying the Teradek cubes. The first one, are you buying them as modular encoder decoders or are you buying them as what Teradek call cubelets, which are essentially pairs of encoders and decoders. The second decision you have to make is how are you going to connect them? Is it going to be wired, wireless, or are you going to use a 4G, 3G network? And the third decision you have to choose is are you going to use HD, SD, SDI cameras or HDMI based cameras? So there are essentially two families of cubes. The 100 series, which is based on HD, SDI. There are three models in that family. You have the standard product, which has HD, SDI encoder decoder with wired connectivity via the sort of Ethernet connection. The second model in that family is HD, SDI encoder decoder with Ethernet plus the addition of wireless. And then the third member of that family is HDSDI encoder decoder with Ethernet for wired, with wireless, and with the additional option of a USB for 3G or 4G connectivity. So the question is, what are we showing here? Well, we've got a mixture of a cubelet and the cube, okay? So I'll explain the cubelet configuration we have here. As Badge is filming me here, we, on his EX1, we have the HDSDI encoder attached to it with the Wi-Fi option. Okay, so that's taking the live HDSI out of the EX1 and then it's converting it over the wireless network to the decoder that we have sat here on the table. That decoder is then taking the wireless connection and reconverting it back into HDSDI and providing the live output to the Sony display at the front here. So again, if this typical scenario will be if you're using it for direct monitoring or production monitoring or logging. Um, we can add on a lot of on-screen information in terms of what the camera is shooting it, as well as the date, the time, and the time code. The second configuration we have here is on the Sony FS100 at the back here. We have the HDMI cubes on there, so that's just the encoder. And that's basically taking the HDMI output of the FS100 and converting it to a wireless connection and instead of having a dedicated cube decoder, I'm actually decoding the stream live on my MacBook Pro here. So I'm going to show you both scenarios, a point to point with an encoder decoder and a point from the encoder to an IT piece of equipment. In this case, it'd be a MacBook Pro, but I'm also going to show you on an iPod Touch. So I guess the, the biggest question is, is how easy is it to set it up? So you need to have a little bit of understanding of how IT networks work really no more than how you would normally need to know to set up your wireless router in your home, okay? So if you're running a Mac or PC, the first thing you need to do is go to your wireless network and you'll see that we have two options here. I have the Kubelet pair as a wireless network and I have my cube, my HDMI cube. I'm gonna launch Safari, which is Apple's web browser. It's available for the Mac and for the PC. And one of the main reasons I like using this web browser for the, the Teradex is the Teradex actually used the Bonjour service, which is provided by Apple. So what is Bonjour? Well, if I just launch the Safari browser for you, um, we can go into the Safari browser by going to the Preferences, and I go to the Bookmarks tab here, and I can switch on the Include Bonjour feature. So I'm just going to click it on here three times and come out. And basically, in the web browser, it gives me this little pull-down menu called Bonjour. And now within that, it shows me the encoder and the decoder. So I don't need to figure out what the name of it is, what the serial number of it is, what the IP address of it is. The Bonjour service actually goes throughout the whole network and actually detects the encoder and decoder for you. So I'm going to choose the Cube 120, which is the HSCI encoder with the Wi-Fi and it's going to load up the Teradek display window. So this is the main logon for the Teradek encoder. So username is admin. The default password is admin also. And that's going to log me in to the Teradek encoder. Okay. 
So there's a separate login for the encoder as there is for the decoder, but we can actually do the decoder from the same window as well. So that launches this, what they call dashboard window, and it's essentially split into four segments. The top left is showing me the live inputs. It tells me it's looking for an in video input, which is 1080-50i, and it's telling me the output settings, what it's streaming out at as. So it's currently streaming out at 1080-50i as well. On the right-hand side, it's telling me that the name of the device, so the default name is the Cube, it's the 120, which is the model of it. And the last five digits on the end are actually the serial number of the unit. So you, if you've got lots of these in a sort of multi-camera shoot, you can very quickly go and figure out which one it is. It's got two settings here, wired and wireless. So obviously, we're not using wired today, but we could plug these in by Ethernet into a network switch and use it that way. But because we're not using it, it's got this little yellow icon next to it. The wireless interface, however, does have a green dot next to it, which tells me it's actually active. And just to the right of that, it shows me that it's using an ad hoc network, and it's actually showing me the name of the network. So it's telling me it's a kubelet ad hoc network. Underneath that, there are two links. There's one link to the full res stream, and there's a second link, what they call the quick view stream for the low res. And I'm gonna to come to that in a minute. The bottom left, we've got this quick configure for the encoder. So um, if I want to go from the encoder to a hardware decoder with like the Teradek here, and this is a device that will actually decode the stream in dedicated hardware to minimize the delay for you. Or whether I want to watch the output on a, a media player, something like VLC on your Mac or your PC, or if I actually want to watch it on an iPod Touch or on an iPad, again, we can set that setting. And we have this custom window here, so I can adjust the output strength. So for example, if I'm out in the field and the, the connection I have to the internet is very slow, even though I've got HD cameras, I might decide that actually I want to stream out over the internet in standard definition at a lower bit rate. And the nice thing about the Cubelets is even though you plug in HD, you can actually choose to output HD or SD in the live stream. And again, you can reduce the bit rate down to half a meg if you want to get it over a low bandwidth network. The vice versa is we can keep it at full HD and we can go up 10 megs plus and then we can use the maximum if we've got a sort of full HD infrastructure available to us. So I guess if that was too much for you and you really want to go through a quick one, two, three step to set this up, where you really should start once you've logged in is this little tab here called the wizard. So if I click on the setup wizard, it launches this real easy to use interface. So it shows me the cube encoder. It says if I don't did it by mistake, I can skip back to the setup and I can do it manually. But actually I'm here now, so I'm gonna walk you through it. So I'm gonna click on the start here button, which says next. And the first thing it's gonna ask me is, what is it, how are these devices connected? Are they connected via the wireless network or are they connected via the wired network? Because we have the cubelets which do both, it's actually showing me both. So it shows me the wired network and it shows me the wireless network. And I can have the computer set them up so it uses what they call a DHCP server so that actually the, the encoder gives me an IP address or I can set them up so they're a static IP address where I assign the IP address to both the encoder, the decoder and the computer. So you're wondering what an IP address is. It's a bit like a telephone number, so I know how to call the encoder, the decoder, and the computer. Once I've set that up, because I'm using the wireless network, an ad hoc network, and like I was saying, an ad hoc network is where you have no wireless switch. If you want to have a wireless hub in the middle and multiple devices connecting to it, we would use something called an infrastructure network, okay? Um, because that's all set up for me, I'm going to use the default settings. I'm going to go to my step two by pressing next. And this is now going to go and look at the encoder and it's going to say, okay, what is the input source? What am I actually plugging into that encoder? So it says to me, it's successfully detected and configured it. You can see it's got a screen grab of me here because it's actually on the camera that's pointing me. And it tells me it's detected an input resolution of 1080 50i, okay. So it very cleverly looks at the input source that you've got going into it, and it sets that for you. If you had no display here, and a big red mess saying it wasn't able to detect it, you need to go back and look at the camera and make sure the output's active. 
So step three, and this is where we choose, once we set the encoder up, where's it gonna go? Is it gonna go to a decoder, a hardware decoder like the Teradek Cube here? Is it gonna go to a Mac or PC for viewing? Or is it gonna go to one of these nice little devices, something like an iPod Touch or to an iPad? So first thing you've gotta decide is, what is the mode of that connection? Is it a wired cable, ethernet cable, or is it a wireless connection? Well, in this configuration, we're gonna use wireless. So I'm gonna set up the wireless. And then it says to me, for step two, what is we actually gonna watch this back on? Well, the hardware decoder is already set up because they're paired in the factory, but I'm also gonna set this up so I can actually watch it on my, my Mac here, okay? So I'm gonna set this up so that I can use something like VLC, and VLC is a free downloaded media player for both the Mac and the PC. So I'm gonna click on this. And the third option and the final option in this window is what is the bit rate? How, what's the quality that you want it to go from the encoder to the decoder, right down to 0.5 megs per second for low bandwidth and right up to five megabits per second for high bandwidth. And you can see here, it's actually giving me a recommendation of three megs. It's saying that that's the sweet spot to touch. So I'm gonna go into three megabits per second and I'm gonna click the apply settings, okay? So it tells me to please wait. And what it's doing is it's actually going to the encoder and it's going to the decoder and it's updating the settings in them to allow me to see those streams, okay? And the fourth point at the step of this window is the video streaming. It actually shows me the links to the stream so I could go and check them, okay? Once we're done there, we click next again and it brings me to this final summary window which says you've completed your wizard, you've using a wired, a wireless network, it's telling me what the input connection is from the video. It's telling me that we're using wireless to transmit, and it's telling me that we're transmitting at three megabits per second, okay? And it's what it's saying next is, do you wanna finish that and save it? Well, we do, so we're just gonna click finish, and that's now gonna go back to the logout window. Okay, so those settings are now set. So now when we go back in, admin, admin, we're now back in and all of my settings are applied. So, as it calls up the dashboard, it will always bring you up the dashboard. I might decide that I want to actually view it on my, on my, instead of my laptop, I want to view it on my, on my uh, iPod Touch or on my iPad. So there is a, an extra step you need to do. So I'm just going to go into video setup here, okay? And we're going to come down to stream settings, okay? And like I said to you, when it streams out, it streams a full res, at a higher bit rate, and it also uses something called a quick stream, a low res version. So by default, we have to enable this, enable second, qu secondary quick stream, quick view stream, okay? So by default, it's actually switched off. So I switched this on, and now instead of having two links to a high res and a low res for wired and wireless, I now have four links, two for wired, two for wireless. And if I wanted to click on the quick view, again, we've got all the links here. I can call them and it'll play them back in my viewer for me. So if you want to watch your live stream on a portable device, something like an iPod Touch or an iPad, you do need to make a small investment. It's in a, an application. The application is called OPlayer. You download it to your device, and, and this is how easy it is to use. So we go to the, the application, we launch it, we go to the open URL, and you remember that link that we copied from the Teradek web page? We're going to paste it in there. So I'm just going to hold my finger down, and it's going to give me the option for paste. We paste it in, and then we're going to click the done, and then it's going to launch that web stream. So I'll just put it to the up, proper position for you. So as you can see, it's very simple and very easy to use. What I've got here is an iPod Touch, taking the live stream from the encoder, and we've also got the hardware decoder providing to the monitor. A little bit of delay, but it's very minimal. Okay, so the nice thing about this different configuration is director can watch it on the monitor, production assistant can watch it on the actual iPad Touch or on an iPod.